I'm here with Zach Merrill who converted this wonderful 55 Morris Traveler to this wonderful powerhouse. Zach, tell us what you did here. Uh, this is a Toyota power conversion. So this is a Toyota 4AGE motor like it was in the Corolla GTS and a uh, uh, MR2 sports car. And it's longitudinally driving the rear wheels through a Toyota T50 transmission and the rear axle out of a Corolla GTS. Uh, so the car has the Toyota drivetrain including the brakes. So it's a uh, five-speed transmission and limited slip differential and four-wheel disc brakes. And it's got suspension modifications to, to make it uh, uh, well-balanced and very, it drives like a good car. You know, it's actually very well behaved car. We drove it from South Carolina. Up here to Vermont. To Vermont. What, what was the biggest challenge fitting this engine for you? Uh, the engine bay in the Morris is very, very short because Alec Azaganis, who designed the car, uh, also designed an engine for it, which was a horizontally opposed flathead uh, uh, four cylinder. And so it was very wide and very, very short. That engine never went into production, so it was introduced with an inline four that just barely. It, and that was a tiny inline four. And so the challenge is to package all this in the length that's provided. You've got a very definite limitation in the length as far as you can go back because the car is rack and pinion steering and the rack is very high mounted under this cross member. So uh, pretty much anything you put there, the first thing you're going to interfere with is the steering. So unless you're willing to you know, scrap the original steering and suspension, you have to live with that placement, <clears throat> and there's only so far you can go forward. And so you did end up scrapping the steering? No, no. no you left no, it no. in. The original steering and suspension architecture is as designed in 1948. It's, it's totally retuned, but it is as designed in 48. So this engine was the, the shortest uh, of the, the fairly modern engines that, that I thought I could pack it in here. This engine is twin cam, 16 valve. And uh, very high rev, you know, red line 7,500. Really? Yeah, it makes really good power. That's quite a difference from the, what is the original Morris engine red line at? The original engine, I think, red lined at about 5,000 in this car because it was this car was an 803cc. Ah, okay. And uh, the Series 2 cars, which this is, the split windshield car, uh, so had a very, very tiny Austin Series A engine. And the Morris Minor 1000, which is the much more commonly seen car beginning 1957, was a 948cc engine, which was significantly more uh, powerful, even though it was. It was rated at 43 horsepower as opposed to, no, I think 37 horsepower on that one. The later one was 43. And how many horsepower are you up to now? 140-ish. It's actually uh, 112 at the rear wheels as measured on the dyno, and I think it's about 140 at the crank. That's great. What were some of the other challenges? Like, what else, all this beautiful workmanship up here, what else did you, you fit air conditioning as well, right? Air conditioning is super challenging because there's barely room for radiator much less air conditioning. So you see how tight the air conditioning condenser is packaged. It's actually uh, partially covered by the radiator, so the condenser is behind the radiator, which I have a friend who's uh, the engineer at uh, Vintage Air. He advised me that wouldn't work, and I told him that I thought it would work just fine if you had enough airflow, and in fact, it does. <laughs> the car cools great. That's great. So uh, packaging the air conditioning was a huge uh, decision <laughs> as far as the time it, because everything had to be fabricated and absolutely everything had to be fabricated and the under dash packaging was very very difficult too so I actually don't know of another Morris Minor that has air conditioning I know a lot of people have attempted it and then there's some hot rods uh, Morris's that have air conditioning that are where they cut away firewall and just shoved everything back and then they fitted air conditioning in that those cars mm. but this is the only stock up here in one I know of. That's great. And how about this whole air box setup? Where'd you get this big can? Well, that's Jaguar. Mid-80s Jaguar sedan. And this, um, this is the Toyota intake manifold, except uh, originally, because this was a rear drive, in, I mean, front drive engine, this is a transverse mounted engine out of a 90. So, 
because this engine, the engine was fairly open to everything under the hood, they actually had the throttle body on the back side of the engine. Oh, I see. In its original configuration, the throttle body, because it was transverse, would yes, be right. on the back. And most of the other relatively short Japanese engines that you see, and um, a lot of people wonder why you didn't use um, other things, um, have the distributor at the back of the cylinder head. The reason that is because they're transversely mounted, that there's plenty of room, so you just drive the distributor off one of the camshafts because it's turning the right speed anyway, and there you go. But if you try to package this with a distributor at the back, you know you've got to you've got to cut away too much of the car. So this engine, because the distributor comes out the side, and I'm absolutely maxed out for clearance toward the uh, at the back, and then I actually had to to change the way the water flows for heater and such because there's there's normally water valving on the back of the motor huh. uh, and to package the engine even shorter and I used uh, Toyota MR2 uh, pulleys because they're thinner to get the maximum amount of clearance for the radiator so all the drive system is driving the, all these pulleys is actually MR2 and not Corolla you just didn't have enough room for anything it's thicker it's than that. Right. Right. And what about mounting it? How did you fabricate the mounts for this? Uh, Toyota Corolla GTS, like an 85, the longitudinal motor mounting system. I used you know, those brackets and mounts on the engine and actually a Corolla GTS exhaust manifold off an 85 car because that car was longitudinal. And then fabricated brackets to go to the to the uh, unibody on this car, and um, that part was pretty easy. How long did it take you for this conversion? Too long. <laughs> <laughs> I, I bought this car in uh, right at the end of 1999, like November of 1999, and I drove it in this configuration for the first time in September of 2005, uh, but I was working on the thing just periodically, just, just occasionally. All right. uh, so. It, it, it's, I don't know, two or three thousand hours probably. That's great. You did a beautiful job, and thank you so much for explaining this to us. Yes, sir. Thanks, Zach. Thanks for stopping by.